put nothing before God. What's going on church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a wonderful day. So I'm in the scripture. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider God also hath set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. See, that scripture let me know that not all trials and tribulations come from the enemy. See, God will bless your life with prosperity. But sometimes he will send the adversary your way to test your faith. And this adversary will make your life so bad that you have no one else to turn to but God. Because sometimes we try to find other ways out of our struggle through the stuff we have when the heavenly father just wants you to turn to him. In Job 1 verse 8 it say, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, and perfect, and an upright man, one that fear God, and esteweth evil? See, Job was a person that avoided evil. He avoided corrupt communications. Yet the heavenly father still allowed the adversary to test his faith because the devil thought because of all the stuff he had, he can be tempted out of his position with the heavenly father. The reason why I'm bringing up Job is because he's a perfect example that when you remain faithful under pressure and you keep going through the pain, then nothing in this world nor principalities in high places can separate you from your relationship that you have between you and the Heavenly Father. See, God allowed Job faith to be tested. But instead of Job turning away from the Heavenly Father, he kept pursuing a relationship with the Heavenly Father. Everybody said this. They said, hey, you probably going through this because you sinned or something like that. You probably going through this because you didn't do something right in the sight of God. But the scriptures say Job was a righteous man. He avoids temptation. He avoids wickedness in order to please the heavenly father. And the enemy tried to use his blessings against him. But because Job remained faithful and he made lost everything, God blessed him. Double for his trouble. He ended up with more than what he started out with. So that's how I know God want to bless your life. Even when he allows certain things to start happening. But God don't want to lose you with the blessing. He don't want to lose you in the day of prosperity. He don't want you to forget about him neither. Because sometimes we get too comfortable with a good life. So we don't spend as much time with the Heavenly Father. We don't pray as much. We don't fast as much. We don't open the word of God as much when we are doing good in life. It's only when we start getting in some sort of trouble that reminds us, oh, I got here because of the father. Oh, I could have died right here, but I didn't because of the father. Oh, I could have lost my house. I could have lost my car. All these life circumstances could have happened to me, but God allowed it to work in my favor. See, we are reminded about God when we're going through stuff. So that's why we got to continue to remember God and his promises when we're not going through stuff. The point I'm trying to make is this. Don't put stuff before God. Keep God number one in your life. Keep God first. Because a lot of times when we step into a place of abundance, when we step into a place of prosperity, when our life is blessed, sometimes we create idols out of our blessings. We start idolizing our blessings and just spending more time with what we have than we do with the Heavenly Father. And when life is going good, in the day of prosperity, it said be joyful in the day of prosperity. So when life is going good, we don't think about God as much. And then once it starts crashing down, we start trying to find other ways out of our struggles with the stuff we have instead of turning to God. So back in Ecclesiastes, that word basically was just letting us know 
in the day of adversity, consider that God might be the one who's allowing it to happen. So you won't have nothing else to turn to but God. God don't want you to turn to nothing else. See, that's another sign that God may be trying to bless your life as well. But he don't want you to worship the blessing. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to recognize where your help comes from. He wants you to understand that every good thing comes from God. But if you ever lose focus, consider that he is allowing the adversity in your life. You know, sometimes when I read words like that, it reminds me of when Peter saw Lord Jesus walking on the water. And he called out to Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus said, yeah, come on out here on the water with me, man. Yeah, come on, man. The weather is pleasant. Not really. But um, he stepped out on the water with him. And the moment he lost focus, he started realizing it's a bad storm out here. And I'm walking on water. And he started doubting. And he started sinking in the water. So as he was sinking in the water, that's a form of adversity. That's a form of going through something. That's a form of struggle. That's what we're going to look at the sinking in the water as a representation of. As he was going through the adversity, his mind got back focused with Lord Jesus. And he started saying, Lord, save me. So Lord Jesus said, you were little faith. But guess what? Because he called out to Lord Jesus, he was there to pull him out of the water. And they got back on the boat. So that's why the Heavenly Father allows certain adversities to come into our life. That's why the Father allowed the adversary to get on us at times. To remind us who we belong to. And that's the Heavenly Father. To rededicate our lives back to the Heavenly Father. To refocus what we got our sights set on. Is it the stuff that you have in life? Is it the problems you're going through in life? Or is it Lord Jesus, the one who can make your life right? See, when we put nothing before God and we keep him first, we keep him number one in our lives. That's how we remain in a blessed state. And when we got to go through trials and tribulations that comes from the father, that's him edifying you in the spirit. That's him getting you to a place of less distractions because you refuse to allow the pleasures of this world to interfere with what you and the Heavenly Father got going on. We got to stay on this path, this narrow way that leads to life. Because one thing about it, if the Father don't test our faith and we start getting too comfortable with what we have here in this world, the devil can use this stuff to manipulate us out of our position with the Heavenly Father. So that's why the Father tests our faith at times. Not all trials and tribulations come from the enemy. That's what that scripture reminded me of. Sometimes God going to test your faith. Sometimes God going to allow certain things to happen in your life. Sometimes God will allow it to get so bad. Like one minute it was 100% good. You was joyful in the day of prosperity. You was joyful. Then all of a sudden, everything becomes 100% bad. And you looking around trying to figure out why. And the Heavenly Father said, what did he say in that scripture? He said, God also has set the one over against the other. To the end that man should find nothing after him. So God might just strip you from everything. So you find nothing after him. So you won't make no mistake that it was God and God all by himself. Especially when he starts to pull you out of that water. Like when Peter was sinking. You might be in the deep end right now, feeling like you're drowning, feeling like you're sinking in the midst of chaos. There might be a storm raging on in your life. And sometimes God will allow you to be in that predicament for a certain amount of time. 
So when he gets ready to pull you out of it, when he gets ready to deliver you from it, you will not make no mistakes. It wasn't the blessings that got you out of that trouble. It was God. The one who provides the blessings. The one who provides a better life. The one who will pull you out of the darkness into the light of Lord Jesus. It was God all by himself. He don't want you to turn to all these other avenues. He don't want you to create these idols in your life. He don't want you to try to get out of situations with your own strength. He wants you to rely on his strength. He wants to be God in your life, over your life. He wants you to respect him, reverence him as God in your life. See, a lot of times when we enter into situations that's proven to be challenging, we can get to a place that we try to pull ourselves out of this situation and we begin to get tired. We begin to get weary. We begin to feel like there's no hope because we are relying on our strength that flees away from us. We get tired, but the heavenly father doesn't. So the more you put your trust in him, the more you wait upon him, he shall renew your strength. He shall restore you. He shall replenish you. He shall feed you. He shall shelter you. God wants to do the miraculous in your life. He don't want you to continue to feel lost. He's going to guide you. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. That's a true statement. See, the reason why people feel lost in life because they don't acknowledge God in all their ways. And when that word say all your ways, it's talking about every single thing that's in your life, every aspect of your life. Complete trust, complete faith. And we gain this through Lord Jesus. Put nothing before God because when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to your life. So if your life getting hard sometimes, it's because God want to get you back on track. He don't want you to look for another because there will not be another. It's only one way to the heavenly father and it's through Lord Jesus. So keep God first. Continue to follow Lord Jesus. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.